my name is Dr. Janita Jeff, and I am a geneticist. You might be wondering, what exactly is a geneticist? Well, a geneticist is a person who studies the genome. And if you're wondering what the genome is, you could think about that as like a guidebook. Let's think about it as a recipe book. And it guides and tells your body every single thing it needs to do, from the way you look, from the time you wake up, from the things you eat, from when you're hungry, when you're not hungry, from the way you think, for the way your nose is shaped, for so many different things that make us uniquely ourselves. Now, I study the genome, and in particular, I study the genome in the context of populations. These are people who share a common ancestor. And let's say this common ancestor or person in your family comes from a region in the world so as a population geneticist, I am studying this book that is rich with full of information telling our body and making us uniquely who we are. Most people think that we look so different. Like I said, this genome, this book, this guide to life makes up every single part of who we are and what we do. But in fact, we're 99.9% .9 the same genetically. So the portion of the genome that I study as a geneticist is such a tiny little part. But this book of instructions that tells us what to do is only composed of four letters. And those four letters are A, T, C, and G. So I study this small little percentage that makes us different, although we look so different. And I study them on a computer. So I look at these four letters and I look for associations with disease or I create technology that could help me study these four letters in this thing called the genome of millions of people. And so you might be wondering, how did I get interested in genetics? And, and why am I even studying the genome? Well, this all started when I was really young. I grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana. And in New Orleans, I was you know, in school doing a bunch of science fairs. And around middle school and high school, I started to realize, dang, I'm really, really good at these science fairs. In fact, I went from a winning the science fair in my class to winning the science fair in my school to winning the science fair at the state, I mean, at, in the city, and then winning the one in the state. And so I had a huge, 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 huge love of science. And that carried me all the way through high school. After I finished high school, I wanted to go to a place that was just right for me. Being a Black woman in science, there's not a lot of people who look like me. And even at a very young age, I knew that. So my family encouraged me, like other members of my family, to attend a historically Black college or university. I chose to go to Spelman College. Spelman College is the number one leader of creating science, Black women scientists in the world. And so I went to Spelman College and while at Spelman, I originally thought that I was gonna be a doctor. I thought that I would be a physician. At the time, my mom was pregnant with my younger sister. After she had already had my brother and I, this was 16 years later, my parents got pregnant and I thought I should be an OBGYN. I think I'm gonna to go to medical school. And as soon as I got to Spelman, they brought out a cadaver and I saw a body and I said, oh no. I think I'm gonna stick to the science thing. I think I like being in the lab. And so while at Spelman, I started to work in a genetics lab. And that was the first time I was introduced to what I like to call damp science, or we like to say a dry lab. What does that mean? Well, you typically think of scientists pipetting in the lab. When it comes to genetics, like I said, we always study the four letters that make up the genome. A, T, C, and G. And so it's really easy for us to extract these four letters, which make up something called DNA that I didn't talk about, and study them on a computer. So while I was at Spelman, it was the first time I learned that I could take the things that I was doing in the physical lab and put them all into a computer. So after that, I decided, man, I really like genetics. And most importantly, if it makes us so different, maybe it could explain why there are different populations of people things that we have socialized and called it race. That might not be science, but there is something to say about people who share common ancestors that is unrelated to the social terms and the things that we deal with called race. And if we understood these differences that make up who we are, 
maybe we could understand disease a little bit better. Maybe we could understand a lot of things that explain who we are, why we like to do certain things and how we can make our lives better now. So I went to Vanderbilt, woohoo! Um, at Vanderbilt, I got a PhD in human genetics. And so I really started to study this. Uh, it's a fun fact, I was the first black person to get a PhD in human genetics from Vanderbilt University. And it was really at Vanderbilt that I really just started to realize how rare being a black woman scientist was. So much so I naturally fell into a position of being a communicator to my community. My job is all computational. That being said, in addition to getting a PhD in human genetics, I also got a master's in applied statistics. So I'm actually a statistician and having that skill set of math and statistics is extremely important when you're looking at those four letters that I talked about, because we are looking at them like how often we see them, who do we see them in, and are there any trends that we can observe with people who have the same patterns and also have perhaps a disease? That required me to get a master's in applied statistics. Yeah. So in addition to having the statistics skills, I also needed to have a really good understanding of computer programming. Now, I've never been in a computer programming class. I actually have learned everything by myself. But what I would recommend for every one of you, as the world continues to advance and as technology continues to advance, I would definitely take some time and learn some computational skills, whether it's coding in Java or coding in Python, all of these skills can be applied to a wide array of disciplines and jobs. So I always tell students it's never, never going to hurt you to learn some more computational skills, whether you decide to stay in science or not. And so after leaving Spelman, I went on to do some additional training similar to a doctor, like a residency. So this is training you do after you get all of your degrees and you want to really perfect your craft. And so I went on to do a postdoc at Mount Sinai. And really, like I said, I was the first Black person to graduate from Vanderbilt with a PhD in human genetics. And so by the time I had gotten to my postdoc, I was really doing a lot of public speaking. And what that led to was a natural love to make sure that I didn't want to be the only person. I didn't want to be the only Black person. I didn't like that there weren't more Black people that I could share in community with in my field. And so what I did was, I started to speak a lot and mostly because people would ask me to speak at career fairs or various events to educate the community and uplift other students who are interested in STEM like yourself to, you know, have someone to look up to. As a result of that, not long after I left my postdoc and started working, I realized that there's a huge need to communicate science. Science is traditionally communicated in English. Uh, is traditionally communicated with a certain dialect that's not culturally relevant. And even the words we use, like those big words I use, DNA and genome, are so out of touch with what most people need to understand science and to be interested in science. And so for that reason, I started a podcast. The name of my podcast is called In Those Genes. And it's a podcast that uses genetics to describe the lost histories and futures of African descendants. I think the best part about my job is that I get to control my schedule, but most importantly, because I can control my schedule, I carve out time like the time I'm doing right now to encourage other students to get interested in science. One of the most inspiring things to me is when I have conversations with people who are not scientists, and I may start off with a really easy question, and then they say, oh, I'm not interested in genetics, I'm not interested in science. And then after we start talking about it, you realize that they are interested in it. You realize that actually everyone is interested in science. We all use science. And I like encouraging people to be scientists. And so one of the most fun things about my job is that I'm able to use all of the knowledge that I've gained in science communication to really teach science to everyone, to make it accessible to everyone and let everyone know that they can be scientists too. And genes are what make us us. So everybody has the same genes. As much as we try to think one person has a gene for this and the other person has a gene for that, we all have the same 25,000 genes. 
But what makes it different are the four letters that make up these genes, and that's called DNA. So those four letters or these four chemicals are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And for short, we call them A, T, C, and G. And so the sequence of these letters is what makes one gene different from the next gene. And within the same gene, you can have a different sequence between different individuals. So I told you guys we're 99% the same. So we have the same genes, but some of our genes may have an A where someone else has a T. And that's what makes us different from each other. Now, genome is a term that refers to your entire gene pool. Now we're talking about all 25,000 genes. We use it as a cohesive term to distinguish it from talking about a particular gene per se. For the sake of explanation, think about your genome as a bowl of rice. The entire bowl is your genome and every spoonful are your individual genes. So we know each bowl of rice has 25,000 spoonfuls or genes. It's been so amazing telling you my story, letting you listen to the podcast. Hopefully you learned a little bit about genetics and hopefully you become interested in genetics too. If any of you want to get in contact with me, you can do so by emailing me at Janina at InThoseGenes.com. You could also follow our podcast at www.InThoseGenes.com. Thank you.